One of the things that I've been exploring through this channel is reading older works of science and seeing how they hold up in the modern day. And every now and then I'll bump into something that holds up incredibly well, even though in theory it should be terribly dated in its specific details. And this week's video is about one such book. The book is called The Human Use of Human Beings by Norbert Wiener. And if the name is at all familiar to you, it is because he is the one who coined the term cybernetics. And the term cybernetics today probably has a very different flavor than when Norbert Wiener first coined it in the 1950s, because the way he originally used the term was to talk about the way that messages and information are transmitted and received between entities. And those entities could be human beings, they could be human beings and machines, and they could also be machines and machines. One of the key concepts that he raised in this work and, then he, and that he brought to a broader audience was the concept of feedback, of the idea that a machine or an entity can receive a message and act on the message in such a way that its future behavior is transformed. And this may seem like a terribly simple-minded, obvious concept, but the way that he laid it out and the implications that he unpacked for it, especially given the uh, emerging information technology at the time, during the 1950s, when the first digital computers were really beginning to take shape and beginning to influence how we thought about these things. This was a huge message. And like I said, even though this is an older work, it was written in the 1950s. And despite some individually dated details, it still stands up because the implications of what it talks about are pretty timeless. This is actually a book that was written as a, a kind of an expansion on, and at the same time, a condensation of an earlier work that he did, except that this one was aimed more at a lay audience, it was aimed more at, at the mainstream, and it turned into a surprise bestseller. And I think one of the things that happened when it sold so many copies is that many people read it, but misinterpreted some of what uh, Wiener was saying, because a lot of what he talks about in the book, as implied by the title, The Human Use of Human Beings, is that the mechanization of our world is something that we are undertaking for the sake of becoming that much more humane. It is not something we are undertaking to become that much more mechanized. It is a way for us to reduce drudgery. It is a way for us to lessen our dependency on human labor for things that are unnecessary. And if any of that sounds familiar in the light of what's been going on today with artificial intelligence and generative AI and all the rest of it, you're right on the nose. And so again, he was trying to emphasize how cybernetics was intended to study how machines and people could complement each other that much better. There are a few chapters where he talks about things like um, machines that could be taught to play chess. And one of the things that made me realize that he was a bit ahead of the game, pun intended, was that he was not necessarily interested in how a computer could be designed that could beat a human being at chess, because that sort of thing seemed relatively inevitable. The reason he wanted to study how a thing like a chess playing machine could be made possible was as part of a larger project of how to understand feedback mechanisms in general, how feedback mechanisms between people or between machines and people or between machines and machines can be improved and made more reliable and made into something that will improve our lives as a whole, not as a project to make human chess players obsolete. And if there's one thing that we've learned about teaching a computer to play chess, it's that none of that takes away the thrill of watching two human beings duke it out on the chessboard. And time and again, he comes down hard on this angle. The danger isn't the machines. It is in our inhuman use of them. It is in, it is in the way that we would regard them as substitutes for human behavior, for human decision-making, for human intuition, as opposed to augmentations of them. And one of the things that I found really delightful about the book is there are a number of speculations and a number of chapters that I think are where he's going a little bit outside of his area of expertise, but are really stimulating nonetheless. For instance, there's one section where he talks about insects versus humans. And he talks about how the physical construction of the human organism facilitates behaviors and possibilities that are not available in other species, specifically insects, because of their physical constitution. Now, I am not a biologist, and he was not a biologist either, so I'm not sure how far those kinds of speculations can be extended and how successful they are. But they're provocative all the same, and again, for a science fiction or fantasy writer, they're exactly the kind of fuel that you would love to pick up on for the basis of a story. 
And he also makes it clear, again, this is another one of those super relevant insights. He makes it clear that any analogies that we would be drawing between brains and digital computing devices are very limited. And one of the ideas that was very much in vogue in, in the time that he was writing the book, and which persisted for a number of years thereafter, and is still unfortunately persistent to this day, was the idea of how many analogies we could draw between the human mind and digital computing devices. And a point that he makes could be phrased roughly as a brain isn't a computer and a computer isn't a brain. They don't do the same things. They may have roughly analogous mechanisms for how input and feedback work, but they should only be regarded as exactly that, analogies. They aren't substitutes for each other. We could not build a brain the same way that we can build a computer because they don't do the same things. And this is an idea that I think we really need to rediscover and internalize because it's leading us up all kinds of blind paths. Now, just my quick rundown of what this book is about and some of the things it touches on should make it very clear why this would be really interesting to any science fiction author. The core concept that he talks about is worth re-examining in the form and in the words that he provided it in because he was writing for an audience for whom all this stuff was still terribly new. And he wanted to be both excited about it and cautionary. And both of those things had to be in balance. And the other thing that I think is worth taking into account is the voice of the author. Wiener was a wonderfully literate man. The book was written for an intelligent audience. It was not written for people who are simply looking to make a buck. And I tried to imagine how this voice could be used in an in in-universe fashion. Imagine someone in your world speaking to the audience in their world about similar insights, speaking in a similarly cautionary way. What case are they making? And how are they trying to make it? And I think a lot of the way that Wiener makes his case, both, both pro and con, both, uh, both as an evangelist and as uh, a cautionary voice, those are both worth studying. So once again, the title of the book is The Human Use of Human Beings, subtitle, Cybernetics and Society, available both paper and digitally. And despite the fact that it was originally written in 1950-something or other, you're going to be really surprised at how current and fresh and timely and stimulating all of it is. Check it out and see what you think.